Well, that was disappointing. Um, this is super niche to philosophy, but I always loved Kantian ethics back in college and everything else, you know, the whole always treat a person as an end and never as a means, totally resonate with that. And all these different things, you know, like intentions being so important, all of these things, but I never grasped, I guess I probably didn't like fully understand the difference between like relativism and realism back in college and now that I do and learning that Kant is like a staunch relativist um you know somebody who believes like what's true for you is true for you and what's true for me is true for me there is no ultimate truth the fact that he doesn't believe that facet of Aristotelian philosophy that there wouldn't be these ultimate ends of things or that we as people wouldn't have like an ultimate purpose or you know all of those pieces really disappointing like that I um I didn't realize the extent of it so in this chapter of after the natural law by professor john lawrence hill um it's called from the spiritual soul to the secular self and basically so descartes had just basically made the mind and the soul synonymous and now we're moving more into Immanuel kant and um he talked about a couple different ralph waldo emerson for a minute about like the romanticism right so more of the idea of like it's the it's the like classic wor liberal worldview it's not necessarily what the political liberal uh, ideology is right now but rather like what traditional liberalism looks like where you know we all need to come into ourselves like it is about individuality and freedom of expression is the greatest good that we can have so i mean it is still what the current liberal mindset would have to some degree um although there are still like some differences but you know and and going into like mill and this idea so in john stuart mill in the subjection of women uh, he had said that women will be free to develop their true selves only when they are freed from their traditional role as wives and mothers and in each respect of this Professor Hill says, in each respect of this movement toward the dissolution of the soul and the move from the spiritual soul to the secular self, um, in each respect, society, custom, and tradition became the nemesis of self. So basically, instead of just saying like, oh no, we like don't have a telos, like everyone can decide for themselves what they need to be and decide what their truths are and what they experience is true for them and that's actually all that they can know there are no ultimate truths um and all of these things it goes from like this innate sense of knowledge to only experience can be true and then our truths are true while somebody else's truths are true and those truths can be universal truths um like if i were to say that my truth is a universal truth that everybody should speak that way <laughs> and this whole idea like it moves into this type of philosophy right and to think that kant kind of like started this um you know he still believed in reason and autonomy he believed that we are rational beings that can still make choices for ourselves and that we are individuals it was a fact you know and that we can like choose a rule to live by and then abide by it it's a fact that we can choose those rules for ourselves and there's no rule in existence that we could ever follow that would ultimately bring us the most amount of peace or the most amount of fulfillment um there's no universality at all all, which um you know as we've talked about several different times throughout this book like that that whole concept just falls short you know you can look at several different situations where it's like okay well you know you, you could probably still justify it to say like well killing somebody you know it's like that's obviously bad it's pretty universally considered wrong <laughs> that ending some another being's life is not good and um but but this would say that well if it's true for me it's true for me so i believe that you know killing you know like the death penalty right so like catholicism does not agree with the death penalty unless there are like extreme stands like an extreme circumstance right like somebody is like escaping from prison and doing a bunch of harm when he's out and then he gets captured again and then escapes again like somebody who is being a menace that is continually um getting put back into prison because they are like the the prison cannot contain them or they're they're like causing problems in the prison you know or stuff like that like there are different extreme situations where the church would say okay in this circumstance you know 
this is what would carry. But anyway, so um, that's a whole different theological conversation. But this idea that like somebody could say, well, no, if somebody, you know, if 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 they do this, like they should, the death penalty should be incurred. Um, and that's true for me. Like I believe that that would be the most good, and this and that, like you know, or suicide, you know, assisted suicide is coming around, and it's just it's a slippery slope, right? You, there are some universal truths. It's like, no, we are built for community. There has to be an element of universality between us, um, that there are ultimate truths that exist within us and within all of us. That's what gives us our human nature. That's what causes us to be able to all have rational brains in and of itself. Like to say that we are all rational and that we all deserve autonomy, that is a universal truth that, that is being claimed. And so, you know, and this is where that type of philosophy falls short, right? Because um, somebody else could say, well, no, we don't deserve autonomy. We should all be in a one large, big, whatever, like do life this way. And we don't deserve autonomy. Everyone should live in a cult and believe that that's like a universal truth. And it's like, well, you know, could that be true for them? I don't know. Like, but where is the universality, right? And so anyway, like the relativism ends up falling short on a few different levels because once you start getting into relativism, you can't just apply it to one situation and say, oh, well, this one's the exception. No, of course, murder is bad across the board, no matter what. Um, you know, you, you can't do that. In this type of philosophy, you you then have a fallacy and then you, you then have something that doesn't align with the actual critical nature of what you're trying to claim. So anyway, but that was like, so in, when I, like I said, and, and right, so, um, so we basically go from like moralism to sensualism. So, you know, you have right, wrong, good, bad as universal truths as our ultimate ends. And then you have sensualists where it's, if it feels good, it is good. If it feels bad, it is bad. Um, and that is what determines morality instead of any type of innate knowledge, instead of any or, ordained order, um, anything like that, then, then you move into the liberal mindset of sensualism, of being sensualist, of romanticism, of, um, you know, yeah, we determine our own morality. There is no ultimate code of morality. It doesn't exist. It can't exist because God doesn't exist and God didn't create it. And so everything is left to the individual to create the individual to create their own moral code. So that's basically what those two things say. I would be a moralist. I do believe in God. I do believe there is an order to the universe. I believe that it makes sense. I believe that it was made from reason. I do not believe that it's because God said so. You know, a bunch of different things. So but anyway, what about Kant? Like, it was just, like I said, that was disappointing to read because I just, I didn't know that he, like, didn't believe in the telos and that he was a very extreme relativist. And just the whole idea to, like, never treat a person as an as a means, but always as an end. So, like, never use somebody, basically, like, they are an ultimate end. Like, that in and of itself seems like a realist perspective. <laughs> like, it doesn't seem like that could be relativist if that's, you know, what he believes is, like, an ultimate truth. Um, and I guess I don't know if he believed that was an ultimate truth or if it was just for himself. But, you know, I don't know. Relativism starts getting tricky. Once you start looking at different pieces, like, well, wait, you know, are we all rational or are we not? Is that just a truth that I believe for myself or do we all have the ability to reason? Because I believe we all have the ability to reason. I believe that's an ultimate truth of our existence and I believe it's true for all people. Um, and so I don't know, like, what do you think? Because Kantian ethics just got a lot more confusing for me than it ever was. I just always took it as intention matters a lot and impact is also important, but intention is, you know, paramount. So, all right, I gotta go, but... Thanks for chatting. <laughs> Talk to you soon.